like i am audible right yeah in your audible so when so let's start it on the count of 3 1 2 all the listeners welcome to another episode of growth journey and for today's episode we have none other than but javed ivan joshi raj the founder of startup africa founder of build your own universe and business development manager at odc so first of all javed welcome what's up how are you doing i'm doing great how about you tisha i'm doing super duper amazing and i'm like really excited you know to uh, to uh, our conversation which we are going to have so you know like I, i would like to just get into it as soon as possible does that sound good to you <laughs> yes definitely a uh, super amazing so jab is like before i would go towards that customer engagement for a part like in detail i would like to know what was your journey how did exactly you got where you are you know how did you learned about all these things like how does the journey look like if you can share with all of us um yeah so it, like just in terms of a uh, journey or in terms of what i've done in the past it's it's mostly um, it's mostly been with dealing with customers dealing with um and when you are in, in sales and marketing that's that's really what you look forward to do right um and the most constructive way to actually take about this journey or take about from this uh, whole learning experience um is to actually understand um each step of the customer's journey within that organization or within a particular you no know, um output that that they want or what is it that we are trying to give value to the customer um so that's been one of my core um, core things that i have i have found that's been useful because more than just selling a product more than just going into a company and and pitching about a product or saying this product is good do you want to buy it or going ahead and saying um good things about your product and then having a sales pitch having an elevator pitch and having everything that's all well and done but what you've got to do is if you cannot add value to their day to day life or if the customer cannot see that value that they have you're not going to be able to get that product sold right um so so yeah so i in, in terms of uh, my growth um I, i obviously started off as a as a sales associate or uh doing doing sales doing cold calls doing uh legion doing digital marketing um and you slowly progress from one step to the other and i i feel that um most of my learning has come when when i've hit a roadblock or when i've hit a a, a failure right how you, you you start looking at how you can actually overcome that failure and then seeing where you can take a next step from the learning curves that you've taken so go back to your processes go back and see what process you have to work on what you have to refine and then keep moving forward so uh i mean there's no there's no success mantra or uh, there's no a particular set way to do things uh you've got to figure out for yourself be self aware and figure out for yourself what actually works for you um and take things step by step uh don't rush it because you're in a fast paced world or because you're in a fast paced sales team uh don't just rush the th- uh, rush the process for the sake of it right dwell on those processes that actually give you results or just dwell on the processes that are being set for you think about those processes align them and then your results are obviously going to follow so you've got to give it time for your results to actually reap so if you if you plant a seed right um the tree isn't going to like grow the next ve- the very next day so you've got to water it you've got to give it the right nutrients you've got to have sunlight air whatever right so it's all a, that's 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 the ecosystem or that's the process that's been created before planting uh just planting a seed and making a tree grow but i'm just using that example and that's literally how you are and if you if you consider yourself a seed water yourself with all those things and then um you will get the end result that you that you want that makes sense and you know i think when answer you also talked about the journey of a customer with your brand and like uh, can, can you share what do you exactly mean or like how does this journey looks like from your perspective um you mean to say like a journey of a customer or just 
like within the sales sales funnel or within once you've once you've got the customer on board uh, can you share both when by way if possible right so um in terms of a journey of a customer so now when you when you actually look at a customer what is it like most often than not like you have the saying that goes that um customers don't know what they want until they actually see it right um it's it's true to a certain point but then you've also got to understand that if there is no need for that product in that particular region or that market then there's no point in forcing a customer to buy it right um and even if you do are you actually going to have a, a fruitful sale because is is that customer going to be a repeat customer is that customer going to stay in with you for a long period of time or use your product for 2 3 months and then figure out oh at the heat of the moment i was sold this product but i'm actually not using it and it happens with us on a day to day basis right so we buy something we have we either have a buyer's remorse or we think that this product doesn't actually do what it's supposed to do right and do you do you go f- like if it's a small thing you obviously do not go fight for it or you, you don't go and complain about it you just forget about it right you're not going to be a repeat customer there or n- neither are you going to be speaking about those experiences to other people because you didn't have a good experience with that product or you didn't have an experience with that product like you didn't have anything to do there was no relationship between you and that product so there was no necessity for you to actually speak about it so what you actually want to be getting in at is having a product which um which other people are able to speak about it to were to others or to other friends of theirs families of theirs and if you can't get that done then there's no real value that you're adding into their lives right so when you look at customer journey i i think like just looking at a customer's perspective or customer's vision like when you're actually adding value to their to their day to day life that's when the next phase of growth of the customer within that within that product or whatever your services that you're selling or what exactly you want you can get those outputs from them so you want data from the customer based on them using your your product or you want um uh, you want them to engage with your product more often um then that's when you can expect that once you've created that value within the within the mindset of the customer that makes sense so like if we are providing any kind of service and if it's just not going to provide any kind of legit value or dense value in like a customers like what the person who is buying and consuming that product mm-hmm. then it won't be that fruitful maybe that customer or consumer won't ever come back to your brand or your business or right. your services exactly hmm. very interesting but coming back to the customer engagement part so you know i i think that every single person knows that engaging with your customers talking to them understanding them all these things are very important but what okay. i see every single day is that people are not or business are not that much focusing on understanding the customer but they are just trying to find a person who they can sell as soon as possible because they want to just generate that revenue as soon as pos- possible before the quarter ends or the financial year ends like first mm-hmm. of all what are your thoughts on um yeah so like see the thing is you have three steps to to just the customer engagement right you want to you want to engage and communicate with that customer you want to retain and grow them like base, basically when you're engaging and communicating them uh or like when you're actually having that whole uh you speaking as a brand to them or you speaking as a as an entity to them you want to be able to give them the context and give them an experience or show them an experience and then you want to move on to the retain like just retaining them and 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 making sure that they are adding like adding trust and adding loyalty within your your within your base or within your uh usage of your product or services and then you you want to fuel them as much as you can right you want to fuel that growth within within your experience or within that relationship it's a relationship right it's basically that customer journey is a relationship between you the company 
it's not a personal relationship but obviously it is a relationship within that person who you've sold the product to and the company or the organization so um yeah so again going back like when you're saying that in the fast paced sales team because you're not going to look at the the customer engagement or you're not going to look at uh giving value to the customer um that is something that's i i think it's a top down thing that has to be work on, worked upon right um so if you're going to uh, have the sales team completely detached from the marketing team so you have a lot of uh, a lot of these com- a lot of the companies what they do is have the sales team and the marketing teams very detached so you don't know what leads i'm getting so for example if the marketing team generates some lead uh after you've given a cold call or after you've emailed them and the customer abuses you uh or the prospect abuses you or says why are you repeatedly calling me why am i getting this new sense or why am i getting all these calls uh what happens next is oh this customer the this this legion team is what like this marketing team is the are the people who gave me that lead so why not go and yell at them so you have this friction between the sales and marketing team right um but in but what i feel is um when you when you start looking at the aspect of the sales and marketing team working combined e- with combined efforts to actually because you see that the sales team are the people who are actually going in and meeting customers face to face or prospects face to face and the marketing team are generally doing back end work or conducting campaigns if you can merge the knowledge of the sales team and the marketing team together you'll get you'll get a much better customer engagement or a much better prospect that's actually coming on board a much better uh portfolio of a of a, a database of lead generation as well so that's a key aspect to getting on board the right customers um like in in a business you don't want to be focusing in on the wrong people that's again what i said why would you forcefully want to sell a product which you know that is not going to be useful to the customer because if even if they do buy it it's not going to work out right so it's, this is the same case when you go into b2b sales as well when if if for example a company does not require a product they're not going to buy it from you like if, if for example if i have a um, if I, if i have a service or if i have a software service that i have to sell if the company does not want it or need it in, within that market or they do not require it for their business they're not going to buy it no matter how much you pressurize them no matter how much because the funding is not going to be given from the director level or whoever is is owning that business you're not going to get that money sanctioned for that product right so look at it like that in the b2c market and things will actually start changing a little bit that makes sense of course very interesting perspective i would say uh you know like just combining the marketing sales uh, but, but still you know uh, i think so it, it is quite clear that uh, marketing and sales team need to work together to get like the high quality leads and conversions i would say and it's not like businesses don't know it but still they are not doing it like uh, is there any specific reason to personally found by the way uh, <laughs> businesses are not doing it? yeah so i mean anywhere that i've gone in you know anywhere I've started working on 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 just profit and loss teams or you know just mainly working with the businesses uh most of the time i've tried to create like it's it's that friction or that barrier that 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 is created like you know it's an it's an un, unsaid barrier it's a, it's a it's something that friction is created by uh, a sense of misunderstanding or you know just as a manager you say like when you when you're managing a team and when you're saying okay those leads are there in the bucket so so go and call them go and contact them um but when when your sales team comes back with feedback saying that these leads are actually not valid leads or uh, i'm not able to get any output of the, because of these leads or i'm not able to actually convert these leads because they came from this pile of junk um or uh, or it, it it was from this campaign that was conducted and this wasn't a successful campaign now what what exactly the next step that the manager does is um okay i'll send you more leads right now 
without looking into the fact that okay um that leads those leads haven't worked and let's go and understand why they haven't worked and maybe let's actually speak to the team um what they could do better you know closing that feedback loop actually starting that process of evaluation and and actually having that research done together in tandem um that's that's where uh, i think that friction starts and um and you pass it on you pass on the communication to your teams like oh the marketing team did that so um uh, because they've generated those leads we have to call them right uh why waste time and money and effort uh in in a lead that is not going to buy a product from you um so know your customers well and that can only be done if you can actually understand what your customers want from you so and th- that you can do literally by you don't have to do a big market research you don't have to be, have like a big r&d team that goes out and and researches about your product needs like in services it's it's just a simple trigger you just have to meet the people who actually meet customers or prospects on a day to day basis or a, you know who actually speak to people go meet the sales team ask a few of the sales team what their perspective is and how like what are the responses that they're getting getting you know um or even just randomly assess calls or cold calls or randomly assess replies of customers that are coming into your database uh have like feedbacks from your direct customers like you have a customer have a feedback journey with your customer um add in a process where uh after you've sold the product not just after you sold the pro- or what you experience because what happens most often is once you've sold a product now i've got this product and and i'm getting a thousand calls for the next one week say asking me am i enjoying the experience because we're in the refund period right we're in the trial period we're in like a phase where we can like at a vulnerable stage where we can get a refund so what does a sales team do is always in touch with a customer for maybe like two weeks three weeks or a month you know um and the moment that that period stops you've left the customer hanging and now the customer's like oh what's this shift there's a complete shift now so that's where you have to have a customer support or a customer success team which actually dwells in on keeping that connect have those automate like even if it is automated emails just have those connections set or have those sequences set up which makes it much easier for the customer to see okay fine they're asking me for feedback or um, how like uh, maybe a random email on uh, how to actually improve or if you're not using this product have an email sent where uh how to efficiently use it better e- even if it's just an email communication it doesn't have to be a call and a 5 to 10 minute call be- just because you've gotten on that customer doesn't mean you don't have to work on that customer that customer can bring you 10 more customers mm, that makes sense and like basically it's just don't focus on all these things and they are like okay and then like all that friction and all it like gets into aggressive just and go <laughs> all the exactly. problems starts to happen hmm that makes sense okay so coming back to the next question okay so so it's as you have been into customer engagement for a good amount of time you have been dealing with customers for a good amount of time what is like have been the major problem which you personally have faced when you are engaging with a person a, a customer or a customer? um yeah so i mean when you are engaging with a customer so not every customer actually wants to be spoken to or you no know, i mean if for example if i just just think of it this way you know um you buy a phone and uh, whether you buy it from apple or samsung um after you buy the phone from them do you get a thousand calls or do you get even calls asking you if you have enjoyed your experience right um it's you 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 don't like you don't uh, it's it's unheard of in in that market right so um and and like what are they doing how are they understanding their customers right and and for them it's just how how much you use a phone how like all those data is there for them because technology is is obviously you know you can obviously have that feedback loop but 
it's not required for them to actually give a phone call to you and then ask you, are you enjoying your experience? Right? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're probably doing it in a small level or trying to understand when they have uh, research that is being going in. Uh, and and obviously they're, they're having ways to find out that communication or getting that communication from customers, from uh, developers or whatever it is. Like there's, there are ways to find that out. Uh, the main blockage is obviously how how to get a customer to actually respond to to a feedback, uh, you know, even a feedback email or a feedback call. Just I'm I'm calling you just to understand whether you're using your product. Now, um, that's where I think your integrations, whatever you have as as a product or a service. You've got to have a, a a good connect, right? Um, and you've got to have a process which is set for customer engagement. And whether you use tools or not, um, you've got to understand. Like, obviously, there are multiple tools that are there to use um, for this, right? Um, I actually don't, I don't want to I don't want to name particular tools because I, I guess uh, there are obviously a lot of tools that are to be used in terms of uh, customer success or customer engagement. Um, and a lot of CRMs also do it. Now, what happens is, uh, are we using that effectively? So that's as that's as an organization, as a business unit, as a as a team uh, dealing with customers. You got to understand: uh, Are you doing the best you can, or are you being uh, able to use that CRM or use that to use those tools that you have? and outreach to the customer, are you doing that as, at, at the best of your abilities, right? And that's again, a top down approach where your management goals and objectives have to be to ensure customer success, ensure customer is engaging with the products and services. So you've got to understand like before selling a product, that product or service has to fall into that prospects. eye at least three to four times, just general like, uh, it's it's a it's a it's a trend or it, it's a you can you can look at it as a psyche or a psychological matter, but if you don't uh, if, like you can you can see a lot of research that shows that if you don't fall into the eyes of that person like three or just three to four times, um, more often than not the customer is not or the prospect is not warm enough to actually buy the product. Right. So the same goes for engagement or customer success as well. So I think that communication gap, you, you can't just wake up one day morning, like, and be like, Oh, I'll call this customer and ask him how his experience was. Right. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a built up communication. That's what I'm, again, I'm saying it's a relationship that you're having. So if that company and that customer is to have a relationship, it has to be an ongoing relationship. Right. So if you don't communicate on a regular basis or if you don't have that communication loop or a feedback loop, then you're leaving that customer out to dry. And then all of a sudden, when you go to them, obviously they're going to, there's going to be backlash. It's like, where were you all these days? Right. Okay. That makes sense. Communication is like one of the most important factor when we talk mm -hmm. about customer again, that is also consistent, continuous yeah. communication, not like out of the blue one day. Hey, are you are using this product, right? How is your experience? <laughs> Don't have to yeah. be like that. <laughs> yeah. Even oh. Just, just, and no, just look at, look at them as like, if you were to buy that pro the same product that you're working with or the service that you're using, how would you want your experience to be? Obviously you don't want a daily messaging service with them. You don't want to have, hi, good morning. How are you? But like, but what is it that, what is it that you actually want? Like what is the intention of your product or service to add value into their life? So understand that, like, and when you start understanding a, a, a product as not just a thing that you're selling and them buying, it's an experience that you're creating. That whole experience has to be, holistic. So you have to close that loop with, uh, with feedback, with communication, with, uh, data that you're taking from the customer as per usage data. Obviously we do a lot of research on understanding how, uh, how long our customers are using our products or how long are they taking to use our products. So when you, when you go to go to market strategies, um, you look at, 
aspect of if my product or service once it hits the market how how long does it take for your your product to actually how long does it take to train the customer to use your product right so how long does it take to um for your customer to actually get engaged with your product and start using it on a regular basis right this is there in the education market this is there in the um in the software uh, software market this is there in all your in all your top top your it services or you know just just general data like that you collect and you understand but are you putting those data to use even if all those data is there most of the management or most of the people working in that organization have no idea or no clue that that data is even valid right so when you have that data put that data to use and actually look at those even if you're a lean organization even if you're a lean startup or if you're a small startup uh, working in uh, with, with an agile management like you still have to close that feedback loop you you can't skip that process in feedback right and like if you look at for example if you even look at agile management uh that feedback is literally the essence of your next step right and without that you're going nowhere so you've got to understand that you know in a more uh tight perspective and you've got to look at it very closely well i would do like literally agree on that part that uh, you know that big data utilization is one of two things which is mm-hmm. required right now in a lot of company because company that started to collect data after uh, getting into this it computer new tech world or generation or era what we need to call it but still how will they utilize it is something which is very important which i don't think to majority that do uh, there is this 20 percentage companies i would say who are utilizing that big data but then there are 80 percent you are either not able to or are just not doing it due to some other reason so yes i would agree on that data utilization part for sure <laughs> okay and you know this actually takes me to my next question because i think the answer you talked about the strategy and the structure and the funnel you create to have that customer engagement how how, how does that strategy or construction or structure looks like and like what process do you personally follow to create it like if there is like yeah so i mean uh it's again going back to a couple of you know uh, a couple of pointers that that we actually speak about you know um i mean the same way that you look at like for example now if i'm a manager if i'm a director if i am a a senior manager or whatever i am within that organization what do i do when i hire an employee right i educate the employee on the the company's goals vision mission we ask we the first in like just your first general conversation as even if you're in hr uh what do you ask your what do you ask your prospect or a prospect employee right um uh, now you ask them did did you did you have the time to go through the company website right now um the same way like you've got to understand like when you're dealing with a prospect you've got to understand again like how did you come to know about us like do you know about us right and the like if the if the prospect says that i have had no idea like you even existed till till date that's a different story like so obviously you haven't like the conversation has to change there it's not okay fine i'm calling from this uh i'm calling from here so um we we do this 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 and um, i think this product will be helpful for your your day to day life and i think this product will help your life uh, to that's not how you create value to them right it's not it's not just having a pitch and just following it blindly right i would say personalize those interactions make sure that whatever interaction that you're having actually has meaning like has a meaningful context within that customer so if the customer has never seen you never heard of you try to warm them up like on your first call don't pitch just ask them right just ask them are you like do you actually have issues uh, dealing with so and so issue on your day to day basis let's say i'm uh, for example if i have a, a a planning software a mind mapping software right now do you have do you find yourself stranded with a lot of ideas but 
not able to get a sense of direction right like start just listening to them and and that's where it's it's like this is also this also comes down to the sales team as well right um, and because they're the ones dealing with the customers it it goes it's a spread out like if you're customer centric just because your organization values and your your company uh, business website says that you're customer centric does not mean you're customer centric right just because you write that as oh i want to make my make sure that this is a customer centric organization does not mean you're customer centric right so personalize those interactions have conversations have a, a tendency to listen to uh, to the customers even the customers unsaid words even prospects that do not turn out to be customers listen to them don't think of them as waste of time listen to them have feedback from them as well you'll learn a lot right the same way like if 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 someone says uh you're bugging me and you're calling me so many times and is cutting the call think about what time are you calling them how many times are you giving them a call and what are the times that you you're calling them you might be calling them uh, at 10 o'clock they just arrived or they they reached work and they're going into that first daily meeting or whatever it is they might be just walking into the meeting or just walking into office and they're already stressed about all the stuff that they have to do um, for the whole day and that's when they get a call from you at the same time every day switch it up right like maybe one day call it like if you call at 10 o'clock the other day try to call at 2 o'clock or if they do pick up just it's going to take a two minute it's it's a two minute conversation can i know when when next to give you a call right at least but make sure that they know what company you're calling from or where you're calling from just in case something rings a bell they can go they might have done their research oh this, this person called me right like let's just check what you know because people people use google they have it on their phones and and make sure most of your like another thing that i, I i'd like to point out was um a lot of our communication is based on a laptop and is based on um emails and like a lot of our communication that we're doing is based on uh based around the the emailing space right newsletters emails and so on right um just look at like even if you look at a lot of surveys or or or, or just research papers um 75% of 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 the society right now okay or just your general uh people like that you're looking at or doing everything with their phones even work emails like uh um, for me that's the most convenient like you're just walking and then you 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 get a mail you just look at the when you when you read the tagline you know if it's important or not then you know whether to respond or not if my boss is emailing me i open it straight away i reply back straight away right noted like even if it's just noted i will look into this or i'll check I'll I'll get back to you or whatever it is you communicate straight away right but why is it that like we are not personalizing experiences for phones go and check if your e- how your email looks on a phone and sometimes you, you like you'll be you'll literally be dumbfounded if if you actually look a lot of these uh, um personalized emails that they're sending if they open it on their phone like or they open it just on a gmail app it it like the format is just so messed up you can't even like understand what company who's me emailing me what's the context of the email what exactly is the call to action nothing right so that's a that's like that's basic stuff like basic simple stuff like that you can actually look into before going into the the market and go doing a widespread campaign you've got to look at and sort out internal stuff like this you've got to make sure that your communication is right and then like just listening to the customers again like i said following up with them having those recorded responses having those communicate and like we speak or we might call them up and we might have had a conversation we don't log the conversation that we've lost that 
So again, when you call them the second time or third time, when you're calling 100 leads, you're not going to remember what, what you spoke to them. Right? And then try to offer content that's helpful to them. So now if you know that this customer is working in so-and-so organization or if he's a, a CEO or a director or whatever, like try to personalize that, but also give him some bit of content which is helpful to them. Like it doesn't have to be like you're, you're working with the whole R&D team, you're working with the whole product team, you're working with everyone in, within the organization, bringing about a, a change in like an email, just for one email. I'm saying just have that, that connect like within your customer base and have like, be able to like, just work around the, the plans or the value that they expect from what the product that they, that you have, you know, uh, and, and just mind map that and like, have a mutual action plan for collaborating and getting forth uh, a decision across and then try to sell in a product or then try to pitch in a product then try to take a uh, an approach where um where you can actually start pitching about them and, and giving him the details about how we as an organization can help you as with our products and services Okay, but don't, don't you think like if I have like 100 leads, then even that uh, micro personalization will also take that large amount of time because there's like this large quantity of leads. So like, is, is this even feasible? A hundred percent, like a hundred percent, you're going to, it's going to take time. So that's where the question comes in. Do you want do you want to be calling a hundred and like, do you want to be calling 140 leads and finding out that only 20 to 30% of those leads are actually valid and who actually would say that you're interested or do you want to work on just try it out? Like, I mean, I've tried it out and I've seen that like, even if I've dropped that 140 to like what a hundred or even uh, even if you're dropping it down a little bit more, you're still getting that 20 to 30. <laughs> it's not like it's, it's not changing the aspect of anything. Like it's, you're just working and nurturing the leads. So you get a, you, you're getting the work that you're putting in, you're getting more out of it. Right. So do you want 30 out of a eight, do you want 30 out of 80 calls that you're doing that, that to be a success or do you want like so 30 out of 140, which ratio looks better for you, right? So, uh, it's, it's about what you value the most. It, like what I'm trying to get, get at is like, uh, if you are customer centric, then you've got to be customer centric in all the, in all the ways possible, even your sales funnel, even if the sales is supposed to take more time, but you're customer centric. If you are, if you are a business that's set out to be customer centric, then you've got to understand that you're keeping customer as a center point. So that's going to involve, or it's going to have its caveats. It's going to have its time consuming approaches and so on. But for example, if you are a fast paced sales team and you do not care about, uh, like cust like customer is not your center point then it's fine. Then go ahead, give a thousand calls. Like that's why uh, telemarketers, like, uh, if they, if they, if they understand a little bit that you do not understand or you don't need this product, or if you, if you, even if you don't have the knowledge of this product, sometimes they'll just cut the call. Like they're like this person, it's, it's a, it's a useless call. They don't want to pursue it. They don't want to have an engagement with you. Right. Just take credit card sales, for example. Like if even, even if you know that, like, for example, it's like, yeah, hi, uh, good morning. Like they, they'll try to pitch the product within that one, they're so fast. And then if they understand that the moment they understand that if you're not interested or if you do not have that little scope of getting the, giving your application or the doubt of even saying, okay, my, my PAN card number or whatever, uh, if you would not like to give those details, they'll immediately hang up, right? They're not going to be like, so, uh, do you think that this credit card will help you in the future? Do you think you will use this, uh, uh feature in the credit card? No, they're not, they're not trying to build a relationship with you at all. 
and the same person will call the next day. They might try three, four, five times and they see rejection every time. So be it. And then that's it. They, they're in like the journey ends there. Right. But when you are in a, in a product or if you're in a service that actually provides value on a regular basis to a customer, then you'd have to, you would have to think, are you ready to invest the time for customers to actually understand customers in the right way possible? So if you're customer centric, then think about it like this as well. Okay, that makes sense. Then this actually takes me to my next question also, because when we talk about executing these kind of things, sometimes companies prefer to have like a special individual team or like person to just and only take care of this customer engagement part. While there is this other side where companies teach these things to every single person who is going to engage with their customers in some other sense. And you know, like they just teach them, they're like, you are doing your work. That's good. But at the same time, you have to focus on this engagement part also. So like mm -hmm. when we talk about customer engagement, how much time and like manpower it actually requ requires or like how exactly a company should normally execute this customer engagement part. So, yeah. So apart from, um, so one thing to look at is one, one is prospects who you want as customers. Those are nurtured by your sales team already. Right. So when you're talking about customer engagement and when you're speaking about customers, like customer support is different, obviously, but when you're, when you're actually speaking about customer engagement, now, once the customers actually got your product or service, now the next stage is to retain them and, and nurture them. Right. And how much time, um, see if, that's what I'm trying to say. Like if, uh, if you're, there's no one size fits all, you know, if you look at it like that, you're going to go miserably, like you're going to go miserably wrong and it's not going to work out because of the fact that a, like different customers might face different issues, but obviously you are going to generalize a few things to make it more simpler for you as a business unit. So, uh, in terms of manpower that you have, whoever or how many ever people that you have, like if you're getting eight hours from an employee, like you can manage that time wisely. Like that's what I'm saying. If you like right now, there are so many automated tools, like most of your CRMs have automated emailing softwares and so on. So, uh, and then if you have an app for your business, you're going to have push notifications that you're going to send and you're going to have a lot of different ways in which you're going to interact with your customer. Like just look at, for example, like Zomato, for example, if you look at, uh, their push notifications, like, Hey, Hey there, are you, are you hungry? Like, you know, uh, I mean, you, you can understand all these things. Like those, those are st like, it might make you laugh sometimes. Like you, you see that notification and you're like, <laughs> uh, like I was just thinking about food, but like that's that, those are the trigger points, right? That's what makes makes that business run and that's what makes them tick and and they found that way of doing things now uh, so again find what you're good at and what your uh, what your value to that customer is and then start working about uh, um, like that's what I, I would say conversational marketing but like that conversational marketing does not stop it's a non-stop thing. It's something that continues even after you've got the customer on board, you can't stop. Right. So take advantage of that and like keep pushing for that, that communication with that customer. Um, it's a cycle. Like I would say, um, I mean, any customer, like just because they've bought your product and that's it, like, it's not a, it's not a one size, uh, it, it's, oh, sorry. It's not like a one-time purchase where you've bought it and then that's it. Now, um, with just for example, like now you're again, if you just go to smartphone brands for Apple, for example, if you take iPhones, uh, someone, someone who's used an iPhone, what do they do? They, do they switch like after they've bought an iPhone, they pretty much stick with that the entire lifespan. Like, 
uh, they like the ecosystem, they might go ahead and buy another product from them. And then it just, you know, it's, it's, it's immersive, you know, so you, you keep adding on. So that's where you, you've got to understand, um, how to actually take them through those experiences. How does Apple do it? Like, do you, do you see them do it physically? They don't like, you don't see them do it physically or they don't make you do something. Uh, it's the ecosystem that's actually designed in such a way, whether it be price points, whether it be your, um, your products and products that are launching, whether it be the integrations that the products have together, uh, just that immersive integrations or this just, just that whole ecosystem itself creates those, those, uh, that opportunity for customers to want them again. Right. So uh, yeah. So again, just reiterating the point that like, you've got to have those, uh, if you are a customer centric organization, then you've got to be ready to put those, uh, put that time in and you've got to have a department for that, or you've got to have the manpower for that. So if you have a hundred member sales team, uh, maybe 20, 30% of that should be customer. You, you should have a 20 to 30% ratio of a, of a customer engagement team as well. So, you know, it's, it, it has to be there. That's like, who's going to nurture your customers once they're on board. You've got to understand that as well. I would agree with that part to be honest. And, and you know, this actually takes me like one of the final questions of our conversation, like last second or last third, I would say. So basically, uh, this is not about the person who might be a customer in future. So it's not like a related to sales team. This person had already bought a product. Okay. Now, after that, engaging with this consumer customer, there are like a lot of platforms and like a lot of different ways from calls to emails to social media and like all other places where we can engage with these customers, even by creating your own community on Discord or on some other platform. Which platform would you personally prefer? Which way will you personally suggest businesses to contact your customer? I know it is like a little bit subjective according to your target audience and where they are mutually active, but still if you have to select one or suggest one, which will that be and why? Yeah, so so I would any support suite softwares, right? Like now you see like any of these support suite softwares, what do they do? Like, you know, they have, uh, just take Zendesk, for example, you know, Zendesk or Freshdesk or, you know, all these support softwares, like, you know, what do they do? They, they give you a clarity. They give you data. They give you, um, maybe a, a ticketing option and, uh, just email responses, email support, like, uh, how to prioritize your customers based on, uh, the issue that's pertaining, right? Um, like I, I wouldn't say that use one particular software. There are so many, so like there's so many stuff, like if you, if I'm a startup, right. And I have only a, a five or 10 member say, like, let's say I have a 10 member team, uh, and we're doing everything together. Um, do I need, uh, do I need, for example, if I, do I need any solutions from Salesforce or like Salesforce service cloud or, uh, Azure CRM plus, or, uh, that sort of, a would I, would I get a product or a service that's very expensive right now inbuilt immediately? Um, maybe you might not have the budget. And if you do not have the budget, like look for something that's usable and look for something that you can actually collect that data and that data should be transferable. So like, once you grow as an organization, obviously you need to move into one of those top rated or top, top tier, uh, tools. You need to start using them, but at the same time, do not, um, that's where you differentiate. Um, Tushar, like I, I come, I keep coming back to this point because I, I think it's very relevant because, um, what are your aims and goals as a company or what is your vision as a, as a company? If your vision as a company is customer oriented and if it is customer centric, then you've got to put in the, the investment, money, time, everything, your resources, everything has to reflect that, uh, that I am customer centric. 
and if you're not customer centric and if you do not have that like because if your product or service does not have like have the intention of having a direct customer relationship then you might avoid it for now just because of budgeting or just because of certain issues you know so um resources are plenty right automation tools are plenty um and i i say like i look at like you know how how for example linkedin twitter all these social media platforms have automations where uh messages from uh messages from businesses come um and why can't we like we can integrate that even to customers who are who are with us right so even if it means like using social media for the, your advantage so uh for example instagram whether it be reels or whether it be a video or um uh, just having that discussion with your customers uh and, and a lot of businesses are focusing on facebook but like uh facebook is like a is like a dying market like a spiral right it's like um your depending on your target audience and your market like obviously you'll you'll switch but uh social media is is a powerful tool and and you can use social media to your leverage not just use these crm platforms and uh use these uh support suite softwares um try to try to look at um uh, ways in which you can actually take forward an approach uh which works for you as an organization in an organizational level like uh, if you're a medium sized organization and you want to focus more on um in customer acquisition and, and so on um uh, you'd you'd put in the efforts for that or if you want to work on customer success you'd put in the efforts for that and look at tools that will actually do the job like um i've been in companies where we use like a a very basic tool from a basic like a, a start another startup um but then you switch maybe a year down the line once you've got the funds once you've got the business running so that's those are ways in which you can actually look at it important point of this whole conversation i think so we can say is that is your business customer centric or not or not yeah because if it is you have to focus on it you can't just yeah. ignore that most important uh, aspect of your business like if you are yeah. calling yourself that okay i am going to be a customer centric business mm -hmm. you have to focus on them otherwise yeah. how exactly are you a customer centric business or yeah. product or service at the end of the day yeah. so yeah, and like after that to so everything depends on the situation and customer exactly. and the budgeting just, and funding exactly so just making it I mean, just putting putting customer first, uh, making it look good, like making a company look good, just by saying customer first, does not get you anywhere, right? Um, <laughs> the same, like, so if if you, it's the same, it's the same as like, uh, like promising something that's not there within your organization or a product that's like launching within maybe. every every product or every uh, service is customer base it should be customer centric but not everything can can sustain in that way because it doesn't require that intensity of customer interactions right so you've got to understand that balance so if yours does then yes it's very applicable to you super amazing and javes this was our time it was a fun conversation let me know how was your experience <laughs> so that was it was wonderful uh, thanks for having me as well um i think we've had like a, a brief chat and then we've hopped on this call so uh yeah so i'm um i'm happy to to take any questions or if anyone has any questions they can email me uh find me on linkedin or contact me through linkedin um and yeah so if uh, i'm 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 all ears to any suggestions, feedback, or anything that you guys have to say. If if this was helpful, then obviously shout out and and give me a a message or whatever.
Sure, sure. You know, like I, I'm telling you, so this is definitely going to like convert it into a podcast, and also all those things will be shared with you, and like we will also like promote the podcast. So we will share your Perfect. email at the same time, LinkedIn, so that people can DM you and you know ask and clear all the doubts they have. So like that wow. part is already you know covered from our side, yeah. <laughs> and, and and it was a fun experience because you know I I also got some different perspectives. I would say because there was some things where I was confused, and you know, like I got some clarity. Especially around the initial and the second half of our podcast, when we are talking about why it is important and why businesses are not doing this. So, like that, that brought some great clarity. And once again, thank you so much, Javed. Like you take out the time. It is such an early morning at your place. <laughs> so you know, like once again, thank you so much. And with that, bye bye. Alright, thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah.